morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatevers. It's me, Stone Whisperer, and we're back with episode 3 of the Warlock of the Higher Top Mountain. Now we left last week in front of a portcullis with two levers, one on the right and one on the left. How you guys voted and decided to go for the one at the left. So you stretch up, pull the lever and to our horror we realise that this dummy lever was a trap. Although it looked like a handle, it was in fact a wax-coated sword blade and has now cut your hand badly. Did you use your right or your left hand? Now, if you were to roll one dice, if the number you roll is odd, this was your sword hand your fighting prowess has been severely hampered. If you're on an even number, use your upper hand, so the injury is not quite so important. However, we now know we want to pull the right lever, so we won't take any real damage here, simply we'll assume that we survived. And I will pull the other lever. You hear deep rumbling noise and the ground begins to shudder. Slowly and noisily the portcullis rises into the ceiling. We now walk to the junction and will we turn west or turn east? Let's go east. Cautiously, you creep along the passageway. After a short time, it turns sharply to the north. At the corner, there's a bench of solid wood. And above the bench, a sign reads, Rest ye here, weary traveller. Here you may stop make provisions if you wish, or continue. Well, after a trap being a few metres away, I'm not inclined to believe that this bench is all that safe. So I think I'll just move on for now. You arrive at another junction in the passageway. You can go west or east. Let's keep on going east. Eventually we will maybe come back onto ourselves. After a few metres, you reach another freeway junction. You can either keep go north or east. Let's start going north. The passage ahead ends at a sturdy door. You listen, but hear nothing. You try the handle. It turns and you enter the room. As you look around, you hear a loud cry from behind you and swing round to see a wild man leaping towards you wielding a large battle axe. He is a mad barbarian, and you must fight him. So with some effort, I think we'll defeat the barbarian. We're wounded, we're tired, and maybe that bench seems like a good idea. So let's defeat the barbarian. And I'll move to the right place. A 
search of a room that reveals nothing of value. A lone old box in the corner contains a wooden mallet and five short stumps of wood sharpened at one end. We take these if you wish, and we can now leave through the door in the north wall. So, seems like we've got some hammering stakes. The door opens into a short corridor, which ends several metres ahead at another door. You listen and hear nothing. You try the handle, and it turns, allowing you into another room of similar size. But this room is splendidly decorated with a polished marble floor and rough walls painted white. On each of the four walls hangs a painting, and there's another door in the north wall. You can either go straight through the room, or you may stop to look at the paintings. I'm intrigued by these paintings, and I thought we're going to rush through. Let's have a quick look. The paintings are portraits of men. Your spine shivers as you read the nameplate under one of the one on the west wall. It is that of Zagor, the warlock whose treasure you are seeking. You look at his portrait and realise you are pitting yourself against an awesome adversary. You have a feeling that you are being watched and notice the piercing eyes following you as you move. You feel yourself drawn towards his portrait, and your fear rises. Do you have the courage to try to combat the warlock? You may either leave through the north door straight away, or you may look through your pack for a weapon to use against the warlock's power. Let's look through our pack and see if there's anything we can use. You try various items of equipment, equipment against the gaze of a painting. You may try any of the following if you have them. Slash the painting with your sword. Hold a jewel in front of it. Plunge a wooden stake into it, or throw cheese at it. I don't want to use a stake here, you never know, and I don't believe I have a jewel or any cheese there. So let's just slash the painting. Your sword flies at your hand into the air and you leap aside as it comes down on you. It grazes your cheek as it falls. You decide you better leave the room. So you pick up her sword and move on. You open the door into a narrow passage and follow it northwards. Some meters up the passageway it turns to the east and turns to the north. However, at the second bend, there is a small alcove in the rock. It seems a convenient hiding place, and a large rock forms a comfortable seat. You may stop here and make provisions, and when we have rested, we can continue northwards. So, we're a bit battered and bloody, but now a bit of rest. The 
the passageway ends in another wooden door, this time a small one with a carved bone handle. You listen, but hear nothing coming from inside. You try the handle, and the door opens into a pear-shaped room with a rough stone floor, making walking across it somewhat awkward. In one corner of the room is a piece of rubble, made with stones and dust, but there are also two odd-shaped pieces of wood and a length of rope. A door in the north wall leads on. Will you examine the bits of wood? Study the length of rope? Or leave? And I'll pass that decision on to you. So again, three choices. Examine the wood, study the rope, or simply leave through the north door. Again, simply reply in the comments, send a message, or otherwise let me know via email or Twitter. In the meantime, though, everybody, I hope you're enjoying our adventure. Please come back. Take care. Have a great day now.